Yo, what's up, everybody? I am back. I know I was live a half an hour ago with Jay Fish, but I am back again, and I have another guest for you guys tonight. And his name is Leonard Bad Boy Garcia. He is a legend in the sport, and here we go. Ba boom! What's going on, man? I feel like I just got done talking to you. <laughs> yeah, man. Long time no talk. <laughs> I'm feeling good, man. Getting ready to go. Uh, uh, hitting the gym after this, and uh, you know, just keep working, man. Yeah, and for those who are uh, are paying attention out there, he is fighting Joe Hitman Elmore, March 19th, BKFC 16 at Biloxi, Mississippi. Unfortunately, I can't get there because I have Army obligations that weekend. Once again, Army is ruining my fucking plans, but I will be watching on the app, and uh, let's uh, let's... I know we just discussed this a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Joe Elmore, and what do you see in this man uh, size stature, psychoticness, power, everything. Hey, hey, everything you just said, man. Uh, you know, he's a monster, man. It's it's uh it's one of those fights that uh that freaking gets you to the gym. You know, he he he's uh he's a scary individual. I feel like uh you know he's one of those guys he's got power in both hands. He swings them both with bad intentions. Um sounds like somebody very similar, <laughs> you know and uh, I think you know you you get two guys in there that 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 uh that all they know how to do is fight. You know, it, it's just it's it's one of those things that I, I feel like uh, it's a fantastic matchup. I think it's the best matchup Bare Knuckle could have made. Um, you know, I you 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 got uh, two guys that 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 could care less, man. Go for broke every time, and uh, you know he proved in his last fight he can go five rounds. A lot of people were thinking about, ah, you know, let's see how he does after a few rounds. And I mean, he proved it. You know, he went five rounds with Tom Schof. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, man. Uh, it, it's just a scary fight. I'm excited for it. I'm ready for it. And, uh, you know, I've been in the gym because of that. And, and uh, I know what I'm up against. So, um, you know, when people hear that you're afraid of somebody, man, it, it's, it's to me, it, that's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It motivates me and it drives me. Oh man, when I when I look at this matchup, I see classic. I see instant classic. I can't believe that they uh, didn't put you on Knuckle Mania, but you know what? They had to have a they had to have a uh, they had to have a main event for the next one. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's, you got to keep the business train rolling. So yeah. he called you out after he fought Tom back in December, correct? Yes, sir. Did you know that call out was coming, or uh, was that a surprise to you? I had no idea, you know. I I knew uh, I knew I was gonna uh, uh, complete, uh, uh, you know, compete at one sixty five from here on out. You know, the drop to fifty five. It kind of, I mean, man, it, it's just I, I can make fifty five. It's just not a good weight class for me anymore. And uh, at sixty five, I feel comfortable. I feel really good. I feel like I carry my power over pretty well. And uh, when 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 I seen uh, that they had done some rankings, and I seen Joe had hit that number one spot. Um, I was curious to see who he was going to call out when he said my name. Um, you know, it made me feel good, you know, for, for the number one guy to call you out. Uh, he must think pretty highly of you. So, uh, man, I, I, like I said, I got tons of respect for the guy. Um, you know, he, he, he called me out for a reason. He thinks he can beat me. So I've got to go in there and prove that he can. Man, it's going to be a treat for everyone now. Now, for those who don't know, this this guy that I'm talking to right now, it's a true honor to talk to you for sure, for real. Like WEC, UFC, Legacy, now BKFC. You took this long stretch from the end of your MMA career to BKFC, and you came out you came out there against Julian Lane and looked awesome. And you you know you put him away, and I think two rounds. You guys went two, right? Yes, sir. Two yeah, rounds. Put him away in the second. It was a outstanding performance and then you uh you ran into jim aylers you know you got to meet him real quick i gotta tell you that jim aylers fight though he shot out of a freaking cannon once you know what i mean like that he, he shot right into my eyeball um <laughs> man it, you know uh uh it was it was uh i tell you what bkfc was 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 a, a great thing you know uh dave feldman reached out after I had been retired for a few years, uh, he offered me the Julian Lane fight. I had to talk my wife into it. I had to talk the family into it, made my deal with God. And I was like, look, I mean, this is what we're going to do. And, uh, 
you know, I I, uh, I dropped everything. I dropped everything I was doing. I, I I took off to the ranch. I got ready for five straight weeks. I trained from day one to the fifth week. Like I, I just went all the way through. Um, and I ended up, it was, it was a great fight between me and Julian. Julian's who's a freaking monster, man. I mean, the dude hits like a truck. It was, it was a very tough fight, but, uh, it was kind of a curse, man. I, I went in there and I thought to myself, okay, I can do this over and over again. I just, all I have to do is drop everything that I've got going for five, six weeks, get down there, do some training and I'm going to win these fights. You know, I'm going to continue to do this until the wheels fall off. And then, uh, in comes Jim Ellers who, um, and, and no excuses. I mean, like you said, he came out like a cannon. He hurt me. And, uh, I mean, he popped my eyeball and, uh, uh, he, he did what a fighter's supposed to do. He, he found a weakness and, and he finished the fight. He did a great job, man. And, and I don't take anything away from Jim. Um, I just wish his punch would have been maybe a centimeter higher where he would have hit some bone. Yeah. Or, or, or 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 underneath and hit the you know the orbital any kind of bone would have been great he squashed my eye now i have to live with a pupil that is dilated more than the other pupil for the rest of my life really uh, yeah i don't know if you can see it but uh uh the well, one of my yeah one of them that the, my, my my left eye pupil is uh a half size bigger than the right eye because I mean, he hit all eyeball. There was no, there was nothing else. I have the picture and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it was ugly, man. I couldn't see a thing, but I've been fighting for so long. I know the second that you say I can't see, they're going to stop the fight. And all I was thinking when I couldn't see was all you have to do is hit him back. If you hit him back, you can probably level the playing field um and 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 uh you know get yourself back into the fight who cares you know your 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 eyes not going to be open for the rest of the fight it doesn't matter um but regardless i learned a lot a tough lesson that night and i i learned that uh when you're preparing for these professional athletes uh you know i've had a professional career uh uh all through like you said legacy ufc uh wc all the way through, I was a professional about it. I always trained and I always got prepared to give people what they paid for, you know, to give them a show and, and to go out there and give a great performance. And uh, Jim taught me that night. When you're fighting professional athletes, you got to be a professional. So um, after that fight, I recovered. I regrouped, um, made sure my eye was good, make sure everything was, you know, that, that, that uh, everything was all right. Uh, uh, everything was good. They told me I was cleared to fight. And I started training, you know, and then here we are, uh, I think a, a year and uh, three months later, and, and I'm getting in there against another monster. And, uh, you know, this time, at least I'm prepared for it, man. I'm, I'm ready to put on a show and I'm ready to go out there and show people what I've been working on. Right. And for anybody who's watching that is not familiar with uh, Elmore, he, he is absolutely like crazy, like he loves, he, he likes to punch himself in the face, punch walls, likes to lick his own blood. He, 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 and he, and he seems like he cuts easy. Like, um, he's like a Diaz brother, you know, behind me on the wall. He's like a Diaz man. Like you hit him once and he's bleeding and he loves it. He's like bathing in it. Like BJ Penn. Yeah. Um, I just, I see this matchup. I, you got your height is similar. Your reach is similar. Your styles are similar. You both swing with everything you have every time. You, you swing the kill every time I see, I see an instant classic and I see like a, like a um, Leonard Garcia versus Korean zombie equivalent in the BKFC. BKFC. It's, it's going to be fireworks, man. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, like I said, man, I get excited just thinking about it because in that chaos and, 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 and during that time when, punches are flying and you're trying to land one and you miss or you make or you don't that's when i feel the most alive um and it takes a guy like joe elmore to 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 bring that out of you because other guys i mean you miss a shot they hear the wind go by and they're like oh hell no i'm running away from that i think joe elmore dives into it he's like come on with it and uh i'm the same way you know if, if, if you hit like i said with with jim 
all I was thinking was all I got to do is hit him back. Um, you know, my eye was in pain. It was swollen up the size of a baseball. And all I could think was all I have to do is hit him back. And like you said, Joe bathes in his own blood, licks it, you know, does all. I, I, have you ever seen that old Richard Pryor joke where he's talking about boxing? He's like, man, this dude don't care about me. He's punching himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you got to watch that one. That's that. That's it was funny because I seen that video. Joe, I was like, man, what the hell what is the this dude doing? doing? <laughs> yeah, he's knocking himself up. I was like, God, dude, he don't even need an opponent. Just knock yourself out. But uh, you know, it's just it's just one of those. Most people wouldn't understand that. Most people would think, man, you're nuts or you're crazy. But like I said, that's what that's what exhilarates me, man. That's what makes me want to get in there against a guy like him. And uh, I'm having fun, man. You know, it, it's it's been a long career and it's been a long time since I've had some fun. So um, I'm really excited, man. And I, I, I do know uh, uh, this fight is going to be a lot of fun for both of us, man. I think, you know, just 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 having that uh being able to face a guy like that, him being able to face a guy like me, I think that brings the best out of both of us. And uh, BKFC couldn't have done a better job with the matchmaking. Now, the 165 title is – who hold, is or is that vacant? Is that vacant right now? Listen. Or do they not have a 165 title? It's a, it's a vacant title. When I fought Julian Lane, I fought for the uh, Bare Knuckle International – Title? Yeah, and you hold that still, right? Yeah, definitely, man. So why this fight's not for the title does make absolutely no sense to me. Um, he's ranked number one. I'm a title holder. Um, we're the number one and the number two guy. If if you really look at the statistics of a title holder and the number one guy, um, I know there's other guys in the division. I get it. But when they asked – for a tournament style, me and Joe said we wanted to fight each other. I to, to me, if they're gonna have like a, a a four man or or you know even if you had a four man tournament, make the co main event for the uh, number one contender. Make me and Joe for the title and hype this thing up, man. You right. Know? So who would be who's the other two in the like in the tournament? Is it Brito and um? Is it Alvin Brito's fight? I believe so, man. Elvin Brito and uh, um, I can't remember what the guy's name that he's fighting. I, I don't know who he is at the fights. Brad Kelly, um, right? Brad Kelly. Okay, so Kelly. So Kelly and Brito, you know, Brito's uh, uh, been 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 through the fire as well, man. I mean, he's he uh, he beat uh, Harris and then uh, uh, before, uh, you know, he fought uh, uh, at 55. Palomino, that, right? And uh, he took uh, uh, Palomino to, to a decision, um, which I thought was a fa fantastic fight as well. I think, you know, Brito's a skilled guy, man. He's got a lot of good things. But I say make him for the number one contender, you know, and and, and give me and Joe that title shot. Um, I think it would just mean so much more, but I don't know what they're doing. And, and at the end of the day, I belt, no belt, it doesn't really matter to me, man. I'm getting to fight Joe Elmore. Yeah. Yeah, that, I wanted to ask that because it doesn't make any sense. If if it's a vacant title, then I don't understand why they wouldn't make your fight for the title, but whatever. I mean, yeah. they must have a grand plan. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean, it, 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 whatever it is, I, I get it. Like I said, I, I, I don't uh, – Dave Feldman is a fantastic promoter. I think uh, he cares about the fighters. Uh, um, he showed me a lot of different things that, that – you know, I've worked for some pretty big – uh, uh, promoters and uh, he's right up there with them, man. And I think that's why this promotion is going to do so well. Yeah, it, it's amazing what they've gotten done in the short period of time that they're growing. Like yeah. you compare their, them right now and entering their third year, right? They're not even like two and a half years compared to like the UFC back in the day, their third or second or third year, they were like almost out the door at that point. Yeah. Um, I wanted to shout out your manager, Kevin Smith, for having you on here. That dude's always taking care of me. He's um, he's a hell of a manager. He's, he seems like he's never – I met him in person for the first time down at Knuckle Mania, and I don't think that guy fucking sits down ever. No. You know what, man? Uh, <laughs> Kevin Kevin is fantastic, man. He, uh, he actually wasn't even managing me, and uh, he came to the back with me after the Ehlers fight. 
and he's seen the, uh, the condition that my eye was in and the doctor was talking about it. And he was like, how in the hell did you take that shot directly to the eye and keep getting up, keep fighting? And I was like, I don't know, man. I mean, I, it's, it's just what I was thinking was I just got to hit this guy back. And he said, you kept jumping into the fire and you know, I, I said, I, I don't, I know, I don't know any other way. Like there's, I, I just, I don't understand how to, how to run away. I don't understand, you know, certain things. And I just told him, it just makes sense to me. If, if, if you're in it, just be all the way in it, man, just go for it. And, uh, man, we, we created a bond and, uh, a really good friendship, man. And then it just, it just made sense, man. He's a fantastic fantastic manager man i i i uh i really like the actual the full fight team that we have um he makes sure we all can coexist with each other and that we can all train together and all these different things he offers up so many great things and like i said dave feldman is a great promoter and he's got a really good relationship with kevin so um it just all fell together perfectly man and i'm real real happy about both those relationships and, and, and I'm glad that, that that you think highly of Kevin because he is. He's fantastic, man. Any fighters coming up, I, I, I would say, man, he, he he's a real manager for the fighters. And, and uh, you guys don't have to worry about any nonsense with him. He, he, he knows what he's doing. He's nonstop for sure. Now, uh, before I let you go on this show. I do it. And I got to tell you, man, I, I've had some some guys on here that I consider legends. I've had like Dean Thomas and John Fitch. And uh, Joey Beltran, I, I feel like you're in the legend class for this. this I appreciate show. it, man. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate so it. I re really appreciate you coming on. I do a thing called the speed round where we have some fun questions. Everybody, okay. we get away from the fight game a little bit. Um, let's do the speed round with there with the bad boy Leonard Garcia right quick. First question: What is your favorite post weigh in meal? Oh man, I really love seafood, man. If we if you could do a a, a rock crab claw that's fantastic i love it man <laughs> rock crab claw. all right rock, is that like a rock lobster because i don't yeah, even know it's it's a it's, a, it's a, a rock crab but it, man it's some big old white uh uh claws with the red marking on it man they're fantastic you gotta have some now oh then now i gotta try that Maybe yes. more, next time i'm down south sounds like a southern thing to me uh what is the craziest thing you've ever seen happen backstage at an event uh Cowboys stocked up one of the main event fighters at a small show, man. Dude, how did I know it was going to have something to do with Cowboy Cerrone, man? That's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, man. He, uh, the dude, was light heavyweight, big old boy, man. And uh, they had some words, man, and, and it didn't go too well, man. He, uh, Cowboy clipped him pretty good, busted his eye open. Guy tried to do all this other stuff, but after watching tape, they seen the guy had done something wrong, and I don't know. It was an ugly deal, man. But it was it was tough to be there with him that night. Oh my god! For dude, for some reason, when I wrote that question, I, I was like, it's probably gonna have something to do with cowboy. I, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, how about a bonus question? What's the craziest thing you've ever done with cowboy outside of fighting? Um, let's see. Man, my wife is close. I can't really answer that one. <laughs> uh, Man, I, I I think probably the dumbest thing we've ever done is uh we jumped some some freaking uh bikes a couple of days before the fights and if you don't know Cowboy busted his old stomach open doing that whole thing doing doing that and uh we went out like a night before the fight and we we're like man to hell with it let's just rip it man and, and we did and uh we we both landed our jumps so it was pretty exciting he jumps a lot further and faster than I do but. I, I still got out there and did it. So just you're you're always on the seat of your pants with Cowboy. You never have a moment to chill. You always got to go for it. Yeah, I'd love to have a conversation about that with him. Uh, how about Marvel versus DC? Who you got? I'm old school, man. I like Marvel. There you go. Me too. Yeah. Especially in the movies. Uh, what is the largest animal that you think you can kill with your bare hands? Man. Um, shoot. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think I could kill a dog. I'm not sure. I don't know if I have it in me to do it. I love dogs, but I think uh, I think I could kill a dog. Uh, well, you know, I always say mountain lion. I feel like I can get a mountain lion. 
You know, I, I thought about that for a second, but I I, uh, I came pretty close to a mountain lion one time, and I seen how big their paws are, and I just kept thinking to myself, like, man, all he's got to do is clip me, and uh, I don't know that it would go so well, but that's a great aspiration. I I, I, uh, I wouldn't want to see that for sure. Yeah. You, know, you understand. Hey, and, and, and by the way, thank you for that, man. I, I appreciate that, and, and without guys like you, uh, we wouldn't be in this great country, man. So thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that too. It's all hey about the mountain lion. It's all about getting his back. You got to get his back and get his neck. You got to get yeah. his back. So I figured if he comes at me with the claws, I could parry them to the side, get his back, wrap it up. Wrap it up. That'd be a wrap. All right, I see it. I see it now. I'd probably bite my fucking arm off, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie of all time. Man, uh, man, favorite movie of all time, Rounders. Oh, nice. Hard movie. Good choice. Uh, who is someone that you always wanted to fight, but it never came to fruition? Is, is there someone out there? Man, you know, you know, uh, uh, Vanderlei Silva, if we would have ever been in the same weight class, I always thought that would have been a crazy fight. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. He's so much bigger than I am, and it's kind of unrealistic, but... I just thought to myself, like, he would be a fantastic fight. Dude was always crazy. I always went for it. And uh, I I would have just loved it, you know. You never fought Aldo, right? No, we got real close several times, man. And, and, and uh, man, I think that would have been pretty close to it. You're, you're, you're exactly right. But, uh, I feel uh, like that one was one that they missed. They uh, They really – we we were we were in the running at the same time, man. He, uh, uh, you know, it's like like uh, it sucked, man. I lost to Brown, and then he beat Brown, and then um, uh, Manny Gambirian decisioned me, and then he knocked out Brown, and then he got Aldo, and I was like, dang it. And so uh, we came very very close at times, but uh, man, Aldo was a monster back then, man. It was it was it would have been a really fun fight, and. Uh, and it would have been great too. Oh, been a banger for sure, man. All right. What's a hobby of yours that might surprise some people? Man, I love listening to eighties music. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I'm like a, 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 a old school eighties guy. I really, really enjoy it. If you listen to my playlist, you would think I was that you'd think that that's how my wife met me. I was making love or something, but I'm actually on the treadmill or hitting pads or something. I just <laughs> love that music, man. I think it was a happy time. It was there, you know, they wasn't talking about guns, violence, or anything else. It's just love and harmony and good things, man. So, yeah, a lot of uh, partying, a lot of partying in the 80s for sure. Molly, <laughs> Molly Crew, did you watch the Molly Crew movie on Netflix? No, I hadn't seen it yet, man. I'm gonna watch it now. You should go watch it. It's nuts. Okay. All right. Uh, favorite TV show of all time? Favorite TV show of all time. Oh, man. Uh, shoot, when I was a kid, Wonder Years, man. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I remember the Wonder Years. The Wonder Years. There you go. My wife sort of looks like uh, a grown-up Winnie Cooper. Winnie Cooper. All right, man. So, I, I, you know, uh, again, man, you know, you grow up watching those shows. You have a crush on all these fake girls, and that's cool, man. I'm, 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 I'm proud of you. So I go to bed with the uh, everybody's dream girl from the 80s. There you go, man, from the 80s. There you go. Good job. Favorite uh, favorite MMA fighter of all time, other than yourself, obviously. Uh, man, I'm going to have to go with uh, Cowboy Cerrone, man. I, I think he's a, he's a, a fantastic fighter. Uh, when, he, when he's on, man, I don't think anybody can beat him. Yeah. I mean, how you can't hate any Cowboy fights. Uh, <laughs> it's like imp – it's impossible. Yeah, uh, you know, the McGregor one was a little tough, man. But you know, they're they he's just he's one of the it's it's so weird, man. When you when you're in the gym with him, I watch him and and he's one of the guys I hated sparring with, man, because he could just figure things out. And he was such a great, you know, she's just 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 such a great person to have in the gym. But uh for sure, man, whenever he was on and you could see it back there and he went out there and he performed. There, there, there was no getting around that dude's legs, man, or or hands. He is just a monster. It's like it's like him and guys like you, him and yourself. You guys are cut from a different cloth. Like when he fought Tony Ferguson, um, yeah. I, I was down in Florida on vacation. I mean, not I was down in Mexico on vacation at standing mm -hmm. at some outdoor bar, and I just remember him trying to rip his eye open. Yeah, open it up. Yeah, he's like using his fingernails. 
And my buddy's like, what the hell is he doing? I'm like, he's trying to rip that friggin' thing open so he yeah. can open his eye back up. Because he's a maniac. Yeah. yeah. Uh, love Cowboy. All right, last one before I let you go. Uh, if you could run back one fight, which one would you pick? Uh, Max Holloway. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Dude. I thought I, th- I thought I thought we won that decision that night. Uh, anybody who can look back on that one, I think it was a great fight. Uh, uh, man, I love Max to death. He's a fantastic. I mean, it, what he's been able to do in the sport is great. But uh, I just, man, I felt like I had his number that night, and I wish we could do it again. What did you think of that performance he put on against Calvin Cater? Man, I you know he is like I said, he's a monster, dude. I mean, he's just freaking Holloway man he's and he was a kid when I fought him you know and 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 now that he's grown up and uh uh really really made a name for himself I mean holy crap man it's 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 awesome to watch it but yeah if I ever had one that I could go back in time and run back and do that one again it'd be him isn't it nuts that Max is still in his 20s yeah completely it's nuts. Freaking nuts like this dude has been fighting forever he looks better than ever. He's not even 30 yet. It's yeah. Just- he hadn't even peaked. He hasn't even hit his prime yet, man. It's scary. Uh, that that I, I'm glad I'm 41 now, so I can talk all this trash. They got to respect me, and I can, I can sit back, you know? So, uh, good, man. Well, you are an excellent, uh, excellent interview here, man. I enjoy talking to you. Everybody needs to pay attention. March 19th on BKFC. Uh, 16, you catch it on the BKE TV app, um, takes place in Biloxi, Mississippi. He headlines it against Joe Elmore. Uh, you want to shout anybody out before I let you go, sir? And first and foremost, thank God for the opportunity. You know, without him, it wouldn't be here. Of course, I have to do the work. Like, you know, he gives you an opportunity, you do the work. And uh, I, I think he gave him my shot, and, and uh, I'm doing the work to go get it. And, and uh, so start there, my family, uh, for supporting me. Kevin Smith, my manager, Smith Brothers Co. Uh, you guys for doing this interview, Mission Accomplished. I found you guys on Instagram. I was checking everything out. Fantastic show, fantastic everything, man. And then, of course, you for your service, man. It's a big deal, and, and, and thank you for that. And uh, all, all, all my sponsors, you know, those have his uh, Billington Real Estate, t to go um, Just a, a, everybody that, that, that uh, Habusa. Everybody who's jumping on board, man, thank you guys. It means a lot to myself and my family. Uh, We're going to give you guys a hell of a show. Uh, March 19th, BKFC. Thank you, Dave Feldman, for putting this match up together. And uh, we're going to get it on. All right, man. You go get your work done. I appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to make this happen tonight. We we hit a little bit of a snag, but you know what? We We showed some resilience and we got our shit done. So thank you so much for coming on. Good luck on the 19th. I can't wait to watch. Have a good one. Thank you, sir. Take it easy, sir. All right. That was the man, bad boy, Leonard Garcia. Thank I'm so happy that we were able to pull that off. You know, um, time zones, man, time zones. What, there was a movie, like, what was that movie? There was a movie called Tag, right? Tag where, uh, I forgot, ah, shit, now I gotta, am, I'm gonna have to find this out, and I'm gonna tell this story afterwards. It has something to do with my boy, Joel, not knowing what time zone you're in. I said, Joel, I'm in, I'm in Florida, you're in, you're in, um, you're in, uh, you're in Connecticut, and he was like, yeah, but what, direction are you in or something like that i'm like what the fuck does that have to do with anything i'm on the eastern seaboard and he was like yeah but you're like i don't know he's a fucking moron but i love him he's my son's godfather i love him anyways that was an excellent interview with my man leonard garcia the bad boy fighting joe elmore uh march 29th biloxi mississippi bkfc 16 catch it on the app uh and then catch catch me tomorrow night at eight o'clock when me and Mike Hunold talk to Nate Shook. But keep your phones on you because we may have Melvin Gillard any minute now. So I'm gonna cut this one off. Might be going live soon. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Leonard Garcia interview. Stay tuned. <laughs>